Christoph. Yes. You can start. You're showing your okay. video. You can start. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Janina. Good, good evening, everybody, uh, on this uh, third, for this third lecture in the series of the TAC series, of the TAC talks. In this format, in these times, we started the network in May when it was almost winter, and now it's almost the longest day of the year. Summer's approaching, but our condition hasn't changed very much. The TAC talks are a conversation between the practitioners of the TAC network, a network which researches the subject of tacit knowledge in architecture, how knowledge is produced and how it is transmitted, what is being passed on and perhaps also what is being lost. This is the angle from which we started the TAC talks, talking about experiences and practice and about the ideas which are embodied in them silently and explicitly. I would very much like to welcome Angelo Lunardi and Giancarlo Floridi from the Milanese uh, practice of on-site studio. The practice was founded in 2006 and is still directed by them. On-site studio, we understand, is interested in the intriguing relationships between the individual object and the city, between the need and the specificity of the forms of a building and the collective character of the urban space of the city, between the idea of modernity and the temporal depth inherent in the construction of places. It is that they believe in the relationships uh, that these relationships can significantly inform the qualities of the architecture and that the city is still the privileged place of these possible resonances. Ob obviously, in these days, in this particular period, that becomes a very, very important and perhaps also contestable, but at the same time, laudable statement. Um, the, the projects of the practice include, among others, the Sassuolo Football Center from 2019, La, La Palace Hotel in Brussels in 2018, the Pirelli Learning Center in, uh, from 2016, a very Milanese project, and the Duca d'Osta Hotel from 2015, and many others. Uh, Onsite Studio has been published in Italian and international magazines and books in Casabella, Domus, Abitare, Le Moniteur, uh, and others. Um, just uh, a brief introduction to the two speakers today. Angelo Lunati uh, graduated from the Politecnico di Milano in 1998, but also studied at the Facultà de, de Architettura do Porto and received a PhD at the ETH Zurich in 2018. Uh, he worked and gained experience uh, uh, working for SMP before establishing on-site studio in 2006. He is uh, currently unit professor uh, of architectural design at Politecnico di Milano. Giancarlo Floridi graduated also from the Politecnico di Milano in 1999 uh, studied uh, also at the Escuela Tecnica Superior de Arquitectura de Madrid and received a PhD at the Politecnico de Milano in 2005. He gained professional experience working for several practices, including JBA, uh, Stephen Hall, Eduardo Sotomora, uh, ODA, before joining uh, on site studio in 2011. He is currently lecturer and unit professor of architectural design at the Politecnico in Milan. Um, Angelo and Giancarlo are going to uh, start this talk. After that, as usual, we we're going to have questions and answers, answers which are prepared, have been prepared by Claudia Mainardi, who is one of the uh, PhD students in this network. Um, I would now very much like to hand over uh, to Giancarlo and Angelo. Hello. Hi. Hello. Thank you, Christoph. Thank you, Thomas, for this 
really kind invitation. I'm trying to charge the presentation. Okay. So we are very happy today to, to join this discussion about tacit knowledge. Um, today, together with Giancarlo, we would like to focus on some aspects of our uh, way of working, uh, some explicit or implicit aspects of our way of working, uh, which are rela related to this uh, question that you were um, introducing. How do we know? How do we tacitly know? And if we do that, we, um, we prepared a list of some themes that we would like to talk together. Um, and we will also combine them with the presentation of some uh, works that we did. These are the issues that we would like to focus on and these are the, um, the, the project that we will present. Um, I will start with this image, uh, which is the, the photograph of the, the basement of our office uh, a couple of days ago, uh, after three months of, 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 of lockdown, uh, in which you can see um, maquettes of uh, existing uh, urban sites, like uh, those ones in the shelves, exper experiments of forms, like this one on the tables, aggregation, samples of materials uh, of different kinds. Um, this, is, this image is not just uh, about a messy room, but it's, uh, I think, conveying the sense of a, of a place in which uh, the experimentation is based on uh, uh, an empirical base. It's not based on a real linear and codified method, but it's something that it's mixing different things um, it's a kind of result of a combination of different kinds of knowledge. Uh, it's also uh, related to our uh, formation, like, like you were saying, Christoph, uh, Giancarlo and me were both studying at architecture at the Politecnico di Milano in those years, in the middle of 90s, in which uh, the big masters were not uh, teaching anymore, or maybe they were not influencing too much the young generation. And then we had uh, this experience, uh, um, kind of uh, illuminating experience, a kind of revealing experience of the Erasmus in which we, we really face another way of approaching the project, which was much more direct and empirical based. Um, so this is uh, uh, to do a lot of, uh, of, uh, of that kind of uh, experience and formation. Uh, for us, uh, the, the city, we consider the city as as a context, uh, not only in physical terms, but in a wider perspective. Uh, we like the complexity uh, and, the, and the unconscious character uh, of the city. And our work is always uh, an attempt to relate to this complexity and um, uh, um, a relate, um, uh, an attempt to, um, to be a response, a specific response uh, to a high specific situation, uh, which is the case of uh, uh, of the urban situation. Um, we have um, an aversion for generic or prototypical work is for this, for that, that we like to understand in the context and uh, to uh, try to within our perspective, uh, um, trying to find resonances and clues uh, from different parts. We, we used to do this in a quite um, dense and short times, uh, this uh, first approach to the projects the, through, co through competition. This is one of the first competition that we did uh, uh, many years ago. Unfortunately, the building uh, uh, hopefully is going to be built uh, in, in this year. Uh, you know that public uh, commission in Italy is are quite hard. Uh, so it's a, it's a school in a quite special place between the, the cemetery and the, and the expo site. And here you see uh, an area um, of uh, new urbanization uh, you, where you see the blocks of the housing that are uh, going to be built. Probably there are some, uh, some, 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 buildings, some buildings still uh, going to be built. And here you see uh, the site in which there was a, uh, a brick construction uh, place in which that was demolished. And, and there's, a, there's the chimney that stands really here in the center of the image, as you can see. Um, the project, uh, we titled this project Architettura Antica Città Nuova, trying to 
um, uh, trying to imagine a transfer between um, from, from of, of the quality of the of the of the of the of the architecture of the of the of the city of the ancient city that could be put inside that uh, piece of of, of 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 new city and then then we we, we will try to transfer really the, the qualities of the of the uh, of the old um, courtyard typologies that are uh, um, uh, dotting the, the the center of, of Milan like uh, the one that we see here um, and uh, we, we 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 thought about a building that could be composed by different buildings courtyard buildings and could be uh, in a way, uh, become uh, a new uh, figure, a rectangular figure in which the, the, the complexity of the, of the ancient buildings could be um, reproposed in that side. And then we were fascinated by the fact, as you can see here, that uh, um, the materiality of the building could um, relate the, to the complexity, to the, the typological complexity of the inside building, as you see, can see here in this wonderful facade of Muzio which is uh, in, one, in one plane trying to resemble the complexity of the things that are happening inside the building. So, so these are pieces of uh, these facades that are facing the park without any kind of fence and uh, uh, they're trying to calmly uh, organize this very long elongated building that is clad with this uh, bright pale uh, clinker tiles in which, as you can hear, uh, see, there are some pieces which are resembling uh, the figure of the houses, like here in the canteen of the, of the school. It's a school for 800, uh, for 800 uh, children, so it's a quite big school, in which the, the presence of the chimney was one of the things to engage with. And then um, we also were fascinated by this other uh, reference that we use in understanding the atmosphere of the place inside the, the, the building, the, the humble uh, space between the building and the chimney in this uh, image of uh, Aldo Rossi Scuola in Fagnanolona, or the, the figure of the roof of Cacciatomignoni, Castiglioni uh, building in Vimercate. And these are some images of the maquette that we made for the competition, in which you can see the classrooms that are facing the garden and the connection between the, the, the different courtyards that make this articulated space an introverted one inside the building. And then the relationship between the rooms and the, and the views towards the garden. While here you see um, the, the kindergarten, which, which, which is the, the most compressed space and the most domestic one, I would say. The second issue is uh, Milan as a paradigm. Actually, Milan is the place where we live and work, but it, it happened to become uh, really a tool of understanding, for understanding and knowing about the crucial aspects of our work. Uh, we think, as you were saying, Christoph, on one hand, the relation between the, the buildings and the city and the, the, and, and the relation between buildings uh, the kind of unsaid and explicit elements that makes this very special urbanity that we can see here in this photograph. Um, we like the fact that Milan is, a, is an anti-monumental city, we could say, uh, in which single objects uh, have their own expression, their, or, or their own specific qualities, but at the same time, uh, they act as a, as a background. Um, Look at that Milan, we are interested in the fact that there are a lot of architects worked uh, um, for uh, private needs, but at the same time, feeling the responsibility to, to build a, a collective space, a collective condition, uh, sometimes unconsciously. And on the other hand, we, we, we are interested in, we are fascinated to the fact that uh, the architects should really feel to be in a, in, a, in, a, in a cultural continuity in a way, um, not referring to a specific moment of, of time. Uh, I mean, we are not interested in uh, referring specifically to the heroic post-war, but we think that uh, there's still the possibility to think about something that really can be contemporary, but at the same time can um, um, 
in a way uh, embody the, the history of, of, of the place within its modernity. So it's, uh, um, as you can see in this photograph, it's uh, uh, um, an attitude that uh, put the new and the, and the existing in, in the same framework. And uh, this interest uh, about Milan uh, brought us to, to make some researches. This, this is, for example, another uh, research that we made uh, for, the, um, for the Biennale uh, some years ago for the pavilion, for the Italian pavilion created by Cino Zucchi, in which uh, we, um, the, the, the title of our work was uh, 18 mineral samples uh, of the city of Milan, in which it was, uh, we, 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 our research was about uh, um, the uh, adaptation, the formal ad adaptation of the vertical of the vertical element of the modern vertical element within the city. Uh, so it's uh, it was about typology. It was, it was about the presence of the building in the city and about uh, how the the, the ab abstraction of the of the vertical element could really adapt to the different cases in the city. And we produced these eighteen samples uh, made out of stone that were put on this long uh, table in the exhibition. This building is, um, which, is uh, um, uh, which is just finished, is in a, in, a, in a quite special place in the city, Bicocca, which was redesigned by Gregotti in the, uh, in the 80s, in the, in, the, in the middle of the 80s, is the maquette of the competition. Uh, with these big blocks of housing, as you can see here on the left, on the left side, uh, uh, um, office buildings, uh, the universities, and then on the right, uh, on the right side, you see the the Pirelli um, campus with, that was still about production and about uh, offices. Where a project is is uh, is that is there in this special place, which is the garden of of this building, which is. Uh, uh, a Renaissance building. We've been fascinated by this exceptional um, um, tradition and exceptional uh, visual uh, um, uh, visual culture and uh, related to the um, to, 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 comp to Pirelli company that, that Pirelli had been developing for, for years, uh, making in incredible interesting image like this one. Uh, using re important gra graphic designers like like Bob Norda, and uh, we thought that it was um, uh, an incredible uh, thesaurus, an incredible source of uh, of visual um, uh, reference for our project, uh, especially the, the the ones that put together the idea of the tie with the, with the more vegetal and more refined um, abstract ideas of patterns. And, uh, and then we also um, consider the Bicocca degli Arcimboldi, which is that Renaissance building that was um, mentioning you before, with this, inter which, which is, you can see a, 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 a window on the left, and then uh, this new door by Portalupi in the 30s that is already working with the new and the old in, uh, in a very consistent way. And we try to put all this together to, uh, think about uh, a piece that could resonate with all this wider context. And, uh, um, and this is the building that, that it stands along these uh, big streets and uh, it's uh, made out of, uh, uh, it's, it's built with, with these uh, big precast panels uh, that are load bearing some, somewhere and somewhere are hanged and with this big um, pitched roof uh, volumes on the roof. So the idea of ornament uh, has been introduced in the in the project uh, uh, by really carving that ornament on the on the um, uh, on the structural elements of, of the building in order to resemble that um, graphic elegance uh, in a way on the on the other side some other patterns that we took uh, from the things that we were uh, that were surrounding us. This is the entrance of the building. And also we, we've been looking, we were very much fascinated by this work by Piero Portaluppi, uh, which is uh, um, 
an headquarter for another company. It was a silk production company in the center of Milan. And uh, we were fascinated by, for its elegant um, uh, environmental character uh, in which the, the pursuit of, of attunement with, with the surrounding uh, is prevailing in a natural way uh, over the, the purpose of the building, which is an office building. Uh, so it seems more like a, like a palace, uh, like a noble palace rather than, a, than, a, than an office building. And we thought that also our, our piece could, uh, in a way, uh, prove that the character of the piece could, uh, and, and, and the relation to, the, to those elements could prevail to these, um, to his purpose, which is an office building. Actually, it's the, the more public building in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, um, in the campus because it's about uh, uh, all the space of the learning center, the restaurants, the canteen, uh, the cafeteria, the gym, and the, all the services of, for the welfare system of the company. And then coming back to Portaluppi, this idea that the materiality of the facade um, could combine the roughness of, of this stone, which is the, 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 the the Chepo stone together with the refined um, uh, and ornament uh, that Portaluppi thought as a, as, a, as a silk veil for this uh, uh, very strong facade. And also in our case, um, the ornament of the facade is also combining with the, uh, with the metal uh, frame that are making the, um, the windows more precious. This is a view from the the the, the, the bicocca degli Arcimboldi and the, the portico that goes uh, and faces the, the big garden, uh, which is a listed um, monumental garden in which you can see the vertical uh, um, uh, decorated pillars that are joining the the lintel with this uh, slightly curved element, and here the relationship with the with the garden. And, um, and the inside, of course, is uh, is very new. Uh, the, the structure uh, is exposed. Uh, the concrete structure is exposed, and no other layers are overlapping uh, the structure, as you can see here from this view from the outside. Uh, another tacit quality. Uh, that uh, is connected to the knowledge that art that we uh, as architects um, generate and, and communicate is about um, uh, the distance between the expectation of ourselves and the one of the clients um, of which uh, we uh, produce here in this image uh, a selection, general managers, managers of investment funds, um, managers of soccer teams, uh, project managers um, dedicated to construction or private uh, um, companies. Um, it's this distance sometimes produce a kind of schizophrenic, um, um, sch schizophrenic situation in which the project has simultaneously um, think about um, being a precise response uh, of the 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 the, 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 the desires and the, and the needs of the, of of the clients and of course uh, be um, a response of the desire and the needs of the architect. So uh, it's a kind of schizophrenic um, situation in in which of course uh, there's something that remains secret. I mean, is is not everything is not played with cards open. I would say on the table. Um, so. Uh, in a way, it seems that uh, the work of the architects is uh, um, um, secretly working parallelly to the one of the clients, which, which is, of course, looking for performances, both commercial, um, I would say, functional performances, energetic ones, uh, and of course, economic performances. This is one of the case, uh, this building that was supposed to be a machine um, I mean, uh, a functional machine that was uh, working for the Sassuolo soccer team, which is a, a, a soccer team that a play, um, a football team that plays in the, in the Premier, in the Italian Premier League, Serie A. Um, it was supposed to be a, a, a functional machine that could really uh, um, support the life, the everyday life of the, of the, of the team. 
And um, actually we started from a very different point of view. Uh, we were fascinated by this image in which the, the football team was really in direct relation to, to the architecture. Uh, as, as you can see here in, 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 in Piazza Santa Croce Square in Florence, in which uh, uh, the architecture frames uh, the, the space of the, of the football uh, game, which was a little bit different from the contemporary one that we know, uh, Calcio Fiorentino. And so the building uh, uh, is facing directly the, the soccer field uh, as a grandstand stepping with three big uh, setback and uh, uh, really defining the, 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 um, the, um, the space of the playground uh, because of also of its length, it's 105 meters long as, as the soccer field and uh, with its presence is really defining and producing a quite urban situation rather than a, um, an, an urban one. And, and then we also were fascinated by this idea of have this kind of uh, humble monumentality within the, the, um, the Po Valley, which the, the end of the Po Valley, which is the place where the city of Sassuolo stands, uh, like um, in this uh, amazing photograph of Luigi Guerri. Um, and the idea of, of, of a, a, a light and humble monumentality is also, is also inside this uh, uh, the section of the building, which is organizing that uh, uh, program that was part of the performance that the client was, was asking in a, in, a, in, a, in a more special way. And also the relationship between the inside and the outside, like we can see here in this brick um, portico, in, in, in this brick barchessa, uh, is, the, is the, it's the Italian name of this, of this structure that spans uh, onto the, the, the countryside that uh, makes the, the relationship between the, um, the, all the spaces for, uh, for, the, for, for the players and the, and, the, and the football field. Here you can see how the setting back are also organized with some balconies to see the football match uh, from the outside. And here you see the other fields that are for the young, uh, for the youth um, team. Um, and the section, of course, talks about this organization of the space that is able to produce uh, a richness in which here you have the, uh, the atrium and then uh, the gym and then the articulation to go uh, on the last floor in which you can see from the plan is a very, very, very thin one. So it, we go from 12 to 8 uh, to 6. Uh, in a very um, uh, strong way, in order to to organize the the, um, the functional uh, program uh, in this um, very long uh, and stretched buildings, and then we were interested also in this uh, ambiguous monumentality of San Petronio uh, in, uh, in 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 Bologna, in which the socal uh, of the building and the, the unfinished. Uh, character of the building could create a, 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 a very special uh, monumentality. And this is the entrance of the building. Uh, here you have the door uh, on, the, on the right side, and then this little space that is um, produced by this little curve of the, of the facade, which is uh, which has this brick, uh, more articulated brick, and uh, with this uh, concrete um, Sokol that provides also a seat uh, welcoming the visitors. Uh, we, uh, we, we follow up uh, with uh, the list of the tacit knowledge element uh, that produce our uh, knowing uh, and sharing knowledge. And uh, la, we, we decide to title this about migration that is telling about uh, the strict relationship between uh, uh, what we call uh, the school, not an academia, uh, and uh, the relationship with uh, the research that we do through the office. And uh, somehow it's interesting because uh, there's a, a knowledge transfer that is happening between school and office in both directions. Because, uh, for example, we start knowing each other 
as assistant in another uh, studio. Uh, and uh, uh, many architects in the office, uh, they've been also our student uh, in the studio or doing uh, final degree thesis. Or they've been assistant in other school in Europe, uh, then joined the office. And so there's a continuous uh, share of knowledge uh, found out uh, in other situation. And uh, we think that uh, migration of knowledge uh, from office to school engage with the tacit knowledge uh, through, for example, sharing references tool that we continuously use uh, uh, both me and Angelo and uh, the, the, the student in the school and we transfer to the student uh, talking about uh, uh, reference or preferences. And uh, uh, for example, exploring the character of the city uh, through the physically crafting a huge model like the one that we are seeing uh, or visiting cities and building continuously. And uh, uh, somehow common themes, uh, they are uh, on the same floor, like the notion of urbanity has been a, a big research that we uh, start with this kind of uh, uh, model and the investigation about the struggle between the architectural object um, and the urban chorality that we see uh, here with a part of, uh, of Milan. And also the idea of uh, duration and time uh, that we try to find out in these images uh, also. Uh, this project uh, that is uh, Piazza Duca d'Aosta, Milan, uh, it's trying to engage uh, with this shared knowledge uh, that somehow uh, is tacit uh, also in the project uh, in, in somehow. Uh, the place is very uh, special, it's a peculiar point, uh, it's the counter corner of uh, the Pirelli building. And so uh, it's the complexion of an existing building that has been uh, uh, destroyed and the new building that we'll, uh, we're making is substituting it. This is a, a, an interesting image uh, that is showing the atmosphere of the place, uh, that is the place uh, of the new city uh, in the 50s when uh, uh, the uh, central station was moved uh, and a new part of the city was developed with the, this tower, Breda, and then the Pirelli uh, in the end. This is a, a very interesting image because it's showing what we were, uh, are also investigating a lot. On one end, the movement of the central station uh, produce a big reflection from the, uh, the city about uh, big axis, uh, the idea of monumentality and uh, uh, the relationship with uh, uh, the fabric of the city. And somehow all of these things are dealing uh, in this drawing that we see on the back, uh, the Baciocchi one. This is the architect, uh, the author of the uh, former building, uh, doing a sketch where the city is just made of a unique uh, generic facade all around uh, with no uh, special building or no uh, monument. In this photograph. Uh, this is a, a, a photograph made by Vincenzo Castella, who's a, a very known photographer. We have a special relationship with uh, photography and photographer, and probably this is also part of this tacit knowledge. Uh, and in this case, uh, uh, the image is showing uh, the, uh, the building, the former building destroyed and the hall in the city. And it's showing uh, the special uh, relationship between the fabric of the city and the unique uh, uh, placement of this object. And it's also trying to explain a quality that we uh, transfer also, and we try to find out in this model in the university and the school uh, made with the student, uh, about the acousmatic quality that some uh, photograph or some model is able. Acousmatic is something when you see an image and you hear one sound that is not in the image you are observing, but is coming from off grid, from off the screen. And somehow the images and model, uh, they try to have uh, this quality about containing uh, things that are not exactly in this point, but they are concerning the culture, the culture of the city and the material of the city. So we see in this image of this strict relationship about uh, uh, the formal analogies between the uh, Baciocchi building that is remaining on the left side uh, and then another relationship about uh, uh, the Pirelli building. 
because uh, when we see the image, uh, the facade uh, that we propose uh, for this uh, special corner is on one end uh, taking the dimension of the former building, taking the same alignment and the continuity of the element. On the other end, the single element producing the facade, they're tapering uh, on top like the concrete structure of the uh, Pirelli skyscraper, like we see. In this case also, like Angelo was saying before, there's a kind of a, a secret uh, uh, relationship between uh, our purpose uh, that was to produce uh, a very uh, urban element able to stand together with the production of the uh, uh, environment of the city. And on the other end, uh, there is a, a very technological building and uh, a, a strong relationship with the, the energy that the client was asking for or for the uh, functionality of the hotel. But in the end, uh, the big deal was to satisfy the technological issue together with something that is talking uh, the morphological and uh, atmospherical quality of the city. Okay. Or in, in this case, uh, we see the relationship with the old volume and the presence of this big uh, portico that is continuing uh, uh, the public quality uh, of the city on the ground floor. And then the detail about uh, uh, the uh, relationship between uh, the material and uh, the, the overall design of this uh, facade made of shadow instead of being just a tool for enclosing the envelope of the building. Then another point is, uh, for example, elect we call it elective activities, uh, uh, about coupling uh, with other people to do project, that we think it's a very peculiar condition. We start uh, having a peculiar condition, being two doing uh, uh, and running the office, uh, Mm, this is uh, also a very interesting situation where we uh, start uh, uh, sharing experience. Uh, we continuously and on a daily basis, uh, we, start, uh, we uh, share references and preferences uh, continuously uh, about a project uh, in Milan or elsewhere or uh, in other point of the history. And uh, this is part also of our coupling with other offices in a special occasion, uh, like uh, le, almost uh, le competition or uh, maybe in other works. And uh, uh, for example, in this case, uh, this was the Farini competition, a big master plan together with uh, le Bauku and Chris Gantenbein le, and uh, Lola Landscape Architect. Uh, le, to produce uh, this big uh, le, urban design. Or like in this case, uh, that is like a, a production of three different offices uh, together with us, uh, and again with uh, Baku for a project in uh, Milan together with Chino Zucchi doing uh, the, the big uh, master plan proposal. And uh, this is a, a work that we made together with Piovene Fabi, le, that is our office based in Milan and Brussels. Le, we are working, uh, this is a, a very strange uh, situation because usually the coupling and the uh, elective affinities, they have an end, uh, obviously. And uh, le, with Piovene Fabi, we have another project that we are le, doing together. Le, and this is a special occasion because usually the combination of two office, uh, it's like uh, a kind of entropic uh, process uh, that is uh, uh, sharing knowledge, method, uh, and point of view or uh, uh, research-based uh, um, tools, uh, but then as a stop uh, before uh, becoming a unique entity with the end of the entropy. And this is uh, the, the, the project we made for a, a very special place, the Castle in Milan, where the administration asked what was uh, the new character that has to get the open space. And so they, they were asking uh, if it was a, a monument, the open space, uh, and not just uh, the object. And this was our uh, proposal about uh, it. Uh, this is a, a, a strange book that is uh, uh, quoting and referring to a previous book about Antolini, 
and uh, also the production of book is part of uh, a kind of uh, a tacit knowledge about uh, uh, transmitting uh, information or collecting references. And then this big model, uh, almost as big as the underground space of Piovene Fabi, it was impossible to move it uh, uh, from it in one point. But the need for uh, the big scale was linked to the use of uh, uh, the model as a, a tool for investigation. Because you can control uh, relationship, uh, scale, material, uh, proportion. And the relationship between uh, our concern that was uh, the urban dimension and materiality, and for example, the Piovene Fabi concern about uh, uh, the uh, radicality of uh, uh, the uh, big void, uh, referring to Antolini's uh, project, uh, and then uh, the programmatic uh, le proposal of, of design. Uh, uh, another point uh, for us has been uh, le, uh, the tacit knowing uh, through the investigative models. Uh, and uh, le, uh, I mean, uh, for example, in this case, uh, this is a series of uh, facade of the same building uh, made in Milan. And then uh, we have another le, example about this uh, facade option coming from the Sassuolo project that we have seen and also this one. And uh, what is interesting is a uh, uh, user model as a, a, a action on one end and, and the, as an object, but mainly as an explorative tool. Uh, architecture, we think that uh, rarely result from a single Eureka moment or from a spontaneous act of genius, but comes from work. And so we find uh, that uh, model crafting, uh, also in the school, uh, it's a, a kind of a non-dogmatic research uh, that uh, uh, engage with an empirical dimension of the architectural uh, uh, domain, like construction uh, somehow. And so, for example, in this case, uh, the obsessive repetition of a, a, a high number of uh, la, la planet variation comes from a kind of scientific method of confronting elements around an established base and not just a founding option elsewhere. And then another point is, uh, like we will see after in this project in Brussels, uh, model becomes a, a, a way of selecting things uh, and then on the other end uh, to construct or to work about uh, an atmosphere and not just about uh, uh, abstract uh, geometries or functional issue. And so with the model, we try to uh, simulate uh, uh, synthetically characters uh, of the construction, uh, precisely like the Sassuolo one with the uh, different dimension and depth of grids, the atmosphere, the shadow, the colors, and uh, there's uh, also a, a very strict uh, and interesting investigation that is made through the possibility to select. You can select, uh, for example, the absence of noise uh, visual uh, from the images of the city to understand which are the strong relationship uh, of the object. The, the project that we show, it's uh, La Place Roger, la, made uh, together with uh, uh, Ambra Fabi and Giovanni Piovene since the competition, uh, a, a strange case of iteration of uh, collaboration of the office, and is the complexion of a corner. And corner also has been uh, uh, one theme in the past year uh, of the office, uh, in the, uh, the school, in the studio. Okay. And uh, this is a very peculiar place uh, close to uh, the very center of Place Roger, the former la central station of uh, Brussels, and uh, in between uh, uh, some European Parliament uh, la corporate building and uh, uh, the la Botanique uh, la Gardens. And we see here uh, this uh, block that is very strange because uh, it's uh, a block made of a uh, hotel and it's uh, almost uh, for half of it uh, made of uh, uh, from the same architect that was Antoine Pomp in uh, 1920s. 
uh, we see in the other image the problem uh, that was uh, the lack of one side of the block on the main uh, axis and so the lack of urbanity on the overall uh, boulevard and the special uh, point. Also in this case, uh, uh, there's a, uh, a secret uh, expectation by the client asking for, a cl for an hotel and so a performative element about function. And on the other end, uh, this was interesting because our interest uh, in the city and our love for urbanity coincide with the Baumeister asking for the complexion of the corner that was uh, lacking of one uh, element since 1960s where they place uh, where you see the little buildings on the right, uh, le, one uh, le subway tunnel. And so this is the block that is made of different facade with someone recurring because they were made by the same architect, but in two different sides of the block. And we decide, as you see in this scheme, to produce not a unique object, but to follow up with the idea of a building of buildings. And so heterogeneity uh, and singularity can combine with the idea of producing a wall and a uh, urban element with a uh, unity. Uh, here are some references uh, that span from uh, uh, the Aldo Rossi and the Milanese uh, experience of this uh, uh, urban element with uh, heterogeneity and uh, unity in the same environment uh, or artistic reference to uh, a collection of uh, uh, elements that have the same size. And in the end, uh, the idea that, for example, this building like uh, Monatnock uh, or the Sullivan one uh, could uh, still uh, resonate uh, and will be able to produce a uh, uh, strong modernity in their time with uh, a steel structure, but with an hanging uh, skin made of uh, uh, material resonating with the atmosphere of the city and having a solidity. And then, like in our case, uh, the aim about producing a very contemporary building, but able to contain the reference to uh, bow window architecture, to uh, the decoration of the 1920s uh, building without being uh, literal, but being analogical. And you see here the building made of two buildings uh, in continuity on one end with the grain of the uh, city and uh, of the surrounding building. And on the other side, uh, producing uh, this uh, uh, very peculiar wall uh, about uh, uh, the uh, conclusion of the corner. The facade, they are different because on one end uh, we have uh, uh, where you see the big uh, holes, a uh, 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 very complex system of truss uh, cantilevering the wall building uh, uh, over the subway. Uh, and this is producing this relationship with the Sullivan experience about uh, the hanging facade. And on the other end, uh, the production and the correspondence uh, between uh, the density of one facade uh, with the bow window and the bay window with the difference concerning the structure. This is the uh, building of buildings block. So the urban uh, complexity and then here we see finally this big model that we made together to understand uh, uh, the quality of the different uh, character, atmosphere and detail that are contained uh, in the existing block and the new building uh, will to contain as, as well as the other one with a new language. Thank you very much. Well, uh, okay. Thank you very much, um, Angelo and Giancarlo. Thank you very much to this introduction to your projects and to your thinking, and uh, also for your reading of Milan and Brussels to cities which are different, but uh, which do share certain aspects in the materiality and perhaps also in 
um, perhaps even the architectural culture, uh, at least at certain part, uh, certain episodes in their histories, uh, because you also have the idea that the Professionismo Colto, which you had in Milan in the 1950s, perhaps there was a sort of local variant in Brussels as well, which produced you some of the big buildings just uh, before the, you know, the city was being destroyed in the 60s and 70s. And also, uh, thank you for uh, these urban scenographies uh, and their representations, which uh, I think are very, very interesting. And of course, uh, add to the whole, let's say, um, repertoire of how you communicate without making things totally explicit, which of course uh, models do. They are very, very precise, but at the same time, there's a lot which is not being said. Um, I would like now to introduce Claudia Manardi, um, and perhaps Claudia could make herself uh, visible at some stage. Cla Claudia uh, kindly has agreed uh, to ask the questions, or some of the questions this evening. Uh, Claudia is a graduate also of the Politecnico, uh, Politecnico di Milano, uh, and has, uh, since her graduation, has developed a what she calls a multidisciplinary or professional profile that benefits from the cross-pollination of a wide range of experiences. Now, they are wide, these experiences, or this range. Uh, she's been working uh, for numerous offices, including Carlo Ratti Associati, uh, OMA, AMO, AMO, MBRDV, Stefano Boeri, Multiplicity Lab and Studio Folder. And with the latter, she has also won a special mention at the uh, 14th Venice Biennale. Um, she's worked as a curator, uh, including uh, at the UABB Shenzhen Biennale and uh, the Biennale in Ljubljana. Uh, Claudia has also read, already uh, 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 been teaching in Milano uh, at the TU Delft and, um, and at the, worked at the New Institute. Uh, there's a lot to be said for somebody, uh, uh, dare I say, so young. So uh, it's an impressive uh, uh, CV. But Claudia, you have now started on your uh, PhD traje trajectory within our, our TAC network. And uh, I would very much like you to give the word, the floor for your questions. Yeah, thank you, uh, Christoph, for the introduction. And thank you very much, uh, Giancarlo and Angelo, for the very interesting, inspiring, and extremely pertinent uh, presentation. Um, I was especially amazed by the richness of content so much related to the main topic of our program. So the way we know and more specifically uh, the tacit knowledge and for being able to open up uh, so many different points of discussion. Uh, I am worried that uh, today uh, will be hard to cover all of them in the few minutes uh, remaining, but uh, let's then consider this uh, final Q&A as uh, just the beginning of our future uh, collaboration, and uh, I'll try to do my best to add a few more uh, points of reflection for everyone. So um, first of all, uh, following uh, the structure of your presentation, uh, inspired by the very appropriate uh, title you gave to the talk uh, and by the very uh, first part when you mentioned your background, I would like to take the chance to ask how your past education and previous working experience around the world that uh, from what I know, range from uh, big, big offices uh, to uh, little atelier and have been able to shape uh, a tacit knowledge that condition the way you conceive uh, your projects today. Um, let's say that uh, it would be interesting, I think, to understand uh, if and to which extent uh, your education and previous experiences uh, inform your current uh, practice. And I guess uh, that the question is also if you have a pantheon of references of heroes, or if instead they are generally gathered on a project-based manner. Thank you. Thank, thank you for all, uh, your question. Um, we, we'll, uh, we think that uh, we, we reflect a lot uh, uh, about uh, la, this point because uh, somehow we met after being uh, Angelo in Porto and me in Madrid. 
and uh, somehow there's a strict relationship between the position that we are taking and the education. Because uh, uh, in the moment uh, we went in, in, in Erasmus, uh, we were looking uh, like everyone going for a grand tour since uh, uh, the 18th century is looking for something lacking in your culture. And the point was uh, that uh, uh, there was an ambiguous situation. Uh, we were looking for la, la theory, la, la, but somehow we had some theory in the, the La Milani school in that point, but what was lacking was the uh, uh, relationship with the uh, practice also, with construction, with the story of building uh, the history of the city. And somehow we discover the uh, visiting building or uh, la, staying, staying with uh, la, um, uh, la, in, in school uh, that were uh, building things and they were visiting uh, works and uh, somehow our gr uh, grand tour was exactly this uh, in this time uh, for Madrid and, uh, and Porto and then the other point was uh, to have uh, to, to see things like first time and so we made a grand tour coming back to Italy because we find out that for example uh, reading quaderns uh, we discover Caccia Dominioni that it was completely forget in, uh, in Milan at this time. And uh, so it was uh, interesting to come back uh, with a different background and to do again a grand tour in Italy to discover, uh, willing to discover the quality that we have been told in another place. And so this uh, tacit uh, uh, um, background uh, uh, has been going uh, uh, on and on, and uh, we still share this, uh, this element. About the office, uh, the, the point was also ah. the same thing about uh, the, the, um, the staying in office that were the pairing the, the production of architecture and the investigation. And they were using buildings as, as book, as tool for doing research. That was something that we couldn't find out in those years uh, in, uh, in Milan. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, I think it's uh, really interesting. And uh, your answer uh, bring me also to the second one. Uh, because uh, over, you talk, over your talk, you uh, mentioned Milan as paradigm. And uh, I can't avoid to, to tackle this point. Uh, in fact, as uh, also Christoph uh, earlier uh, mentioned, I mean, you seem to interpret in a way the tradition of the so-called professionismo colto, so a practice uh, informed by a wide uh, knowledge that span beyond the boundaries of uh, the discipline, let's say. So without a priori structure and the learning by doing that uh, materializes in, especially in details rather than in spectacular visions, such as uh, uh, like, for example, the new towers in uh, Porta Nuova or on the other side over indulgent theories, such as the uh, historical revival that characterized the local debate in the past years. So uh, my question is, if you think that such an approach uh, uh, still interprets the Milanese identity and uh, how uh, you position your practice within the network of Milanese professionals, but also academics. Hmm. Yeah, th this is a, a tough one. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, the, the, the issue of Milan is, is quite uh, central uh, also in our thinking. Uh, we, we have actually one uh, point which is uh, uh, clear to us. Uh, we have uh, some certainties actually, and uh, the fact that uh, the um, the point, the real point, is not uh, reinterpreting the tradition, the Milanese tradition, or the um, uh, you know the, the professionalismo colto uh, attitude. Uh, I think that we think that these things are could be really secondary uh, to the point because um, uh, identitarian issues could be also dangerous sometimes and uh, and also no and the nostalgic one are pathetic. So we are really trying to escape because th this is the danger of, of, of this operation. We are really trying to escape this uh, 
um, this this um, this attitude. We really think that the point is really redefining the uh, the role and, and the figure of the of the architect in the contemporary uh, society, uh, or even better to. Uh, uh, understand, uh, revive, give value back to the to the beauty of the European city uh, through the work of the architect uh, of a contemporary architect like like us. So we know that uh, today the this has been abandoned. Uh, of course, if, as, you, as you were saying before, uh, all the globalized cities. And Milan is one of the. Uh, globalized cities um, are seeing uh, big changes, of course, and uh, strong financial energies are coming to the city and are changing this special urbanity, we think. Um, and uh, the, the city that is produced uh, through which uh, um, things, uh, it's a city that is not uh, linking back to what was before and it is not able to uh, to be the background of what is to come. So th th there's, there's, a, there's a problem of, of continuity. And we think that uh, uh, looking back at the architects, like for example, those one that we, sh we mentioned before, um, uh, no, no importance is if they are coming from Milano or Copenhagen. Uh, I mean, we can look at uh, Emilio Lancia or Kay Fisker or uh, other architects um, in Europe that really worked on this idea of um, of the of the urban environment, uh, we think it's it's really crucial at this moment. Uh, so it's not about uh, uh, it's not a problem of Milan; it's a problem of the European city in general. And uh, of course, uh, uh, the story of modern Milan for us is is special because uh, it's available every day. I mean, we, we have just to open the door and walk into the street, and uh, it is not possible to avoid this this richness uh, of, of experience of knowledge that we uh, that we have uh, uh, just yes well, going into the into to the city and uh, and and also the fact that this richness this urbanity is this uh, um, this, this special uh, atmosphere has been made through uh, speculative uh, buildings i mean we're not talking about museum or or gardens or public infrastructure we are talking about speculative housing for bourgeois and office buildings, uh, so it's for this that is uh, even more relevant for, for for us in the contemporary condition. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you very much. I mean, I would love to to keep going uh, because it's extremely interesting. But uh, I think that this uh, what you were saying now is also very much linked to uh, what I would like to ask you now. Uh, in the sense that I would be interested, uh, as last question, let's say, to uh, better understand indeed your reading uh, of uh, the contemporary uh, and what's your take on that. Uh, so, um, to better say, my question is uh, if research is an important uh, component of your practice, uh, and uh, I guess so, but uh, if yes, uh, if it is project based or if you have a precise agenda. Uh, but the question is also uh, if uh, you think that the contemporary social, cultural, economical events of the 21st century uh, find space in a way uh, within your design method. So if you have a political position, a manifesto that emerged through your design, or uh, if on the contrary, it's not part of your uh, practice. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I will. I will start. Maybe then I will leave to Giancarlo. Uh, regarding the um, uh, the agenda, uh, that, that's that's. Uh, we we think that uh, we we started uh, making specific responses uh, rather than um, defining a, 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 a research agenda. Uh, actually, we are a little bit skeptic about uh, uh, a priori. Uh, theorization. So we, but actually, we we were we were of course sharing the same interest, and then uh, do, doing things. Uh, actually, maybe this uh, uh, awareness is becoming a little bit wider, and uh, uh, maybe we are um, organizing these um, uh, ideas and this uh, concern in in a, in a more mature way. I would say to tackle, um, to, really to to give place. Uh, to these uh, issues in the in the discourse of the city, like we were saying, the contemporary city, which is uh, 
uh, uh, of course, colonized uh, by other issues like uh, resilience, sustainability, adaptation. All these things, of course, are very important, but we have also to uh, give place and to, to resist uh, to all this with, 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 this, uh, with the things that we, we, we are really interested with. And regarding the, the politics, uh, I think that Giancarlo and me have uh, a kind of mistrust uh, about uh, uh, any kind of ideology. So we think really that uh, culture should be um, uh, in a way uh, preserved from too sharp uh, position. And that uh, uh, like Norberto Bobbio was saying, politics or culture, we think that really uh, the culture should be really um, avoiding uh, uh, political conflicts and, um, uh, and to be uh, uh, to produce a tolerant um, environment in which idea can emerge more naturally. Yes, then uh, la, la, I want to, to stress about, uh, for example, our interest in the city, uh, more our love for the city. Uh, we think that is a very, la, we feel it's a very uh, strong position about uh, the, the matter of the research or uh, the engagement that we can uh, uh, talk about instead of call it politic, probably. But the urgency about a, a global agenda is talking about, for example, how much, uh, not about the quantitative discourse now about city, metropolis, and so on, but probably about the quality of the city as urbanity that is a matter of heterogeneity. And so we have a feeling that being able to construct a city as a background in many cases, like uh, Angelo was saying about the function, uh, the, 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 a good city has the ability to be a free space, as we know etymologically in Germany, the, the big experience about a, a city as a free space uh, culturally, and uh, able to engage with uh, uh, the ability to be heterogeneous. And so we, we feel that this is a very uh, strong issue about engagement, uh, to be worried about uh, the ability to uh, have a continuity of some value and qualities uh, or to produce uh, an environment uh, that is uh, uh, choral and not uh, uh, egoist or link to something. That is a, a, a fantastic text about, about uh, Tessenov, about the color of the city. And Tessin of Sale, uh, uh, that the color of the city is made of uh, uh, not uh, strong things, uh, but very tamed, uh, producing a background that is able to express uh, a strong idea of collectivity. Thank you very much, uh, both of you, uh, for, uh, uh, for these questions and for the answers, of course. Thank you, uh, Claudia, as well. I mean, one thing which I picked up uh, from this conversation is uh, this notion of the migration, of, of us being migrants intellectually and uh, literally, although not at this moment, uh, how we learn from out other cultural situations uh, or, and the discoveries from other cultural uh, contexts and sometimes rediscovering the the, the context from which we come ourselves. You men mentioned that, that, you know, it's basically the discoveries from other people of Milanese culture in the 1950s that perhaps uh, is now stimulating uh, the current debate in Milan. Um, I mean, the irony is, of course, that, re that relies on traveling to places, uh, which we can't do at the moment, eating in different places uh, and uh, doing things like the Romans did. Um, uh, very briefly, I, what is very interesting is I think there's also a sort of thread through the lectures now, because uh, in the first lecture, we had Holger Hoffman talking about how much working um, first in Amsterdam and then in the Rhineland and Dusseldorf has actually changed his agenda. Uh, that is, of course, a condition, but it's also, let's say, a, con a cultural context, which is changing, which makes you shift your, uh, your position. Uh, sometimes perhaps without you even noticing that yeah and i guess that will have happened uh, uh, also in your case through being in Mila uh, madrid and uh, in, in, in lisbon or, or in porto although it's of course broadly speaking mediterranean cultures 
And I'm also reminded, of course, of the conversation we had last week, no, two weeks back, with uh, Klaus uh, Ruin and Ola Brons Vessel about uh, the very specific situation in Sweden, which somewhat rem resembles the Milanese situation, where there's a very strong uh, history uh, of a culture and a shared culture in the 50s and 60s, uh, which somehow becomes very interesting to have a look at again. Now, very briefly, um, one last question which I would, which actually reconnects to the last question of Claudia. So if the 1950s and 60s, uh, the period of the Miracolo Economico were obviously a period of great cultural confidence and productivity. Uh, we could say it was successful also because there was a shared model of the city and a sh shared model of society. Um, it was a shared culture in an Italy that at that moment was still fairly culturally homogeneous. Um, Although we all value that, the outcome of that, of course, uh, we are now living in a very different world. And I was wondering whether you could say something about how you communicate with and within a society that has become hyper diverse and uh, not least in Milan, yeah, which is no longer just an Italian city. It's become a very European city, which shows uh, actually all the phenomena that you would find in any European city right now. Um, and I was specifically wondering, wondering whether you could perhaps say where there may be moments in your work uh, that reflect this particular aspect of our cultural con condition. You know, the people who live in your buildings are no longer all people who were culturally uh, raised and embedded in Italian culture. And I'm not talking, you know, that uh, culture of uh, Porta Nuova and all that, uh, you know, that stuff that could be anywhere. I'm really talking about, you know, the people that, uh, that you see in the streets of Milan where increasingly cafes are run by Chinese and um, where the traders, of course, um, uh, are from the whole continent south of Europe. Yeah, I, I would start, Giancarlo, then you, you, you... I know it's a difficult question, and it's, uh, you know... I, no, no, I, no, no, not, it's, yeah. no, but Christoph, it's... I mean, we, we've been talking uh, about that uh, when, when we talked uh, a week ago. Uh, that, that is one of the, of the issue. I mean, it's... Uh, we, we, we don't think it's... Uh, uh, you, you, should, you should be a revolutionary in, um, in your attitude as architect, because you, you cannot change, of course, society. We have... A very small role in what's happening. Uh, I agree. Yeah. Uh, um, but uh, we uh, actually, my, my, my position is that uh, even in the 50s and in the 60s, even if, of course, there was a cozy milieu and, uh, and, and the, the, society, the society was much more compact. But at the end, I'm not sure that. Uh, um, there was not uh, um, uh, heterogeneity. The mm -hmm. point is that the, the, the clients in society relies on the architects to represent to represent the, their idea of modernity and the idea of, of a collective system. So I, I think that uh, things have changed, uh, of course, and uh, uh, society has been atomized, I would say. Uh, so we are all such uh, um, uh, very different, uh, but uh, the point is that architecture is something that lasts uh, and, uh, and, and it is so, no, it's not something that uh, is changeable every 10 years. And uh, we think that we have to, uh, our responsibility is to push forward these ideas. Of course, the, the mainstream is another one. The mainstream is, uh, and is even uh, always more than another one, but we think that uh, uh, we have to resist the mainstream and uh, um, uh, and, and think about um, a new solution to uh, combine uh, this position with the, with the new instances. I mean, it's not about uh, coming back, but it's, it's, uh, it's about uh, uh, being contemporary and, and really 
it, that was actually it was the problem of the of of, of, the, of the the guys in the in 15 and 60s. They they have the problem to recover history and be contemporary. So mm -hmm. it, it is not so is not such a different situation for, uh, for an architect of the 50s and for an architect uh, as uh, in, in a contemporary condition. The point is to combine contemporariness, the the the, the needs that we really have now, and uh, and uh, uh, resistance. Uh, uh, to make an architecture that is, uh, in a way, capable to, uh, to 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 resist all this uh, change. Also, the 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 fate about uh, uh, duration and the uh, ambiguous uh, relationship with history and, uh, and picking things uh, into uh, a historical trajectory. Uh, with a certain kind of freedom uh, and not in a chronological way about a continuity like a frozen situation, but the ability to resonate and connect to different kind of culture, new one uh, or the uh, old one on the same plan without uh, uh, you know, an aristocratic view about uh, what is uh, qualitative and what is not. I have to tell this, this is very anecdotal, but to explain it, uh, I have to confess, Angelo, the, the, our first uh, work in the office uh, uh, has not been very established. It was uh, the Senegalese Association uh, in the suburb of Bergamo asking for a cultural center. And, and this was the first client of the office. <laughs> uh, we made, uh, not, not, uh, not us, but there was a presentation of a big model to the president in Senegal and so on. And this was exactly what he was saying. The issue that uh, society and contemporarity they were presenting about the urgency to have a cultural center, then corpses uh, problem, uh, blah, blah. But the point was not to give form to all this issue, literally, like in many cases it happened, but for example, the point was to give a kind of a, 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 um, a base, place that it was strong enough to produce a, a idea of a duration and relationship with time instead of a continuous temporality of the migration. Well, I think that that is an answer. I mean, we didn't see the, the, the cultural center right now. Yeah. Perhaps we'll see it in the, in the future. Um, it's interesting because we had, in fact, in all the three uh, lectures, no, in two, the, two of the lectures, we had a mosque as one of the examples. Now we have the cultural center in Senegal, <laughs> uh, uh, in Bergamo, a, a place that we all know only too well and, of course, have great sympathy for. Thank you very, very much uh, for this very, very interesting evening. Uh, I see in Milan there's a little bit of sun. I can tell you so is in Amsterdam. And I actually hope that there will be sun over this whole European Union of ours. Um, the next um, lecture will be on the 18th of June, that's next week. And it will be taking us to Flanders, to Belgium. Uh, to get. Uh, Paul, uh, Paul uh, Vermeule and Henk de Smet will uh, take us to their work. Uh, the introduction is by uh, my very valued colleague uh, uh, Tom Avamata and Jono Bennett will join us from South Africa to ask the questions. How's that? Thank you very much. A very, very good evening to all of you and enjoy the remainder of Corpus Christi, which is today. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.